This is the critical point here. This lump that you have, which is a cancer. On the surgeons, a life in the balance. Uh, this is very difficult. This has been unbelievably difficult. You might think that since I have to experience death, have to face it uh, constantly, that I would somehow have a perception and a perspective that would be valuable and transformative. I do not. I don't think I am any more prepared than anybody else. Just get your knife and fork there and burn this stuff while I hold it. Dr. Bryce Taylor leads the busiest surgical team in the country, specializing in cancers of the liver, bowel, and pancreas. I started out a number of years ago as a, a true general surgeon. At that time, I, I basically called myself a hand surgeon. I did anything I could get my hands on. My specialty now is really restricted to mainly cancer uh, of the pancreas, of the biliary tract, of the liver. I feel as if I know you because I would uh, I talked to your doctor down in Florida. You had uh, a superb assessment and, and treatment down there. Let it be known, he was full of praise about you too. He said, well, when you go back to Toronto, this Dr. Taylor, he is an expert. He knows what he's talking about there, so. <laughs> Reinhard Banson suddenly developed jaundice during his vacation. Tests showed a lump in his pancreas, which in six weeks has almost doubled in size. To remove that lump, we have to remove the things around it. It's a major operation involving removal of part of the stomach, okay. the duodenum, the head of the pancreas, the lower end of the bile duct, and also we remove the gallbladder. The Whipple procedure is a, a long, complicated operation, but it, it really is a, a series of, of operations strung together. The Whipple procedure is one of Dr. Taylor's surgical specialties. In the past decade, he and his team have performed over 500 of these procedures. I was aware this is going to be a pretty uh, severe kind of operation. You've got to go in and, and uh, lay things bare and cut and slash there. I performed the same operation, believe it or not, on somebody who was 88, which may sound bordering on crazy, uh, but the fact is that she lived well into her 90s. I, I hope my, my tissues have enough regenerative and recuperative powers to kind of mold and mend and stitch themselves together there so that everything is running good there, you know. Many of the diseases that, that I deal with have basically unknown causes. I'm in the situation of dealing with something that, for the most part, patients didn't ask for, they didn't cause, it wasn't their fault. Hi, Marcus. Hi. How are you doing? Thank you. Hi. You look wonderful. It's me and the patient against that and that particular problem. I think in most cases, therefore, it's simply bad luck. Barry Rothstein and John Marshall continue their outstanding contributions in research. And Dr. John Taylor is one of Canada's medical elite. He's not only a highly skilled surgeon, but as surgeon in chief for all of Toronto's University Health Network, he's the boss man to 90 surgeons at three of the largest downtown hospitals. We do have the talent that improves life for individual patients. And I'm confident that we also have the talent that can help to improve the system as well. Thank you very much. Now this is where you take your life in your hands. I'm gonna run. That's how we do it. Honest to God, we're, we're afraid that somebody is gonna get really hurt one of these days. By any standard, Dr. Taylor has a grueling schedule. Well, we have one major organization with three major hospitals. I uh, have the job of straddling all three. This includes hopping on the shuttle bus to deal with scheduling problems. I was just approached by an ENT guy who said that there's a conflict on Friday's rounds. And even scrutinizing his surgeon's travel budgets. That's just uh, a metro pass in Boston to get me back and forth. That's uh, accommodation. You're not walking? Um, I walk, yeah. <laughs> I'll stay in a tent. <laughs>
but I love the diversity of doing six or seven different things and and then completing that whole capsule, that whole scene and saying, gee, that was fun, that was good, and let's get on to the next thing. Hi there. Bonjour. Ça va? Oui. 68-year-old Eddie St. Jacques had surgery for colon cancer two years ago. Now a tumor has been discovered on his liver. As far as we can tell from all the x-rays, you've got one and only one lump in the liver, which is the best situation to have. So there's one vein that comes in here, there's another vein that comes down there, and then there's another vein that comes right towards that tumor. Uh, what we have to do at surgery, though, is to spend the first little while trying to confirm all those things that we've seen on the x-rays. We'll be in touch with you. You're going to be here, are you? Okay. Are you staying at a hotel? Yes, yeah. I'm staying at the Delta. Okay. All right, so are there any other questions that you had? Um... I'm ready for it. Okay, so get a good sleep tonight. We'll try. I will do the same. <laughs> And yes. we'll, see, we'll see you. <laughs> we'll see you break. It's probably more important than I do, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. A difficult procedure. Eddie St. Jacques' surgery is expected to last more than four hours. These days, Dr. Taylor takes on only the most complicated cases. You'd worry about burnout if all you're doing is very, very complex cases. But I guess I'm, I'm old enough now that if I was going to burn out, it'd be, I'd be long gone by now. Are you set? Good. Oh boy. Look at this. Look at the size of it. Are you set? Good. This is the second cancer surgery Eddie St. Jacques has had in two years. Okay, my dear. Here we go. Get your home for the next few hours. I don't think that we can really be good doctors unless we, we try to put ourselves in the place of that patient each time. Uh, the day that it becomes routine and the day that we don't feel, at least in part, what they're going through, uh, I, I think is the day that we aren't quite as good a doctor as we used to be. Now this is Mr. Saint-Jacques' uh, CT scan and you can see this lump here and it happens to be in the left side of the liver. So, in effect, by taking the left side out, we're taking about 40% of the, the liver. Although Dr. Taylor has performed liver surgery many times, they are anything but routine. In a liver resection, we won't know until we examine the liver with our hands if they have only one lesion or two lesions and if everything else in the abdomen is clear. In this case, they detect no more than a single lesion and proceed with the surgery. Hey, that's it, eh? There might be, a, might be a small artery in there. When I'm in the operating room, I love it because the phones aren't ringing and I'm concentrating on something. I'm working with some challenging problem, both mentally and physically, and wrestling it to its knees. The veins and arteries surrounding the liver need to be isolated before they can start taking out the tumor. That's the, uh, we've come across the left and middle hepatic vein. The tumor is right in here, crossing that line here. And this has already lost its blood supply. It kind of gives us a, a road map as to where to go when we resect the liver. Okay, I think we're almost there. After more than four hours of operating, Dr. Taylor and his team are finally ready to remove the tumor. Look at this, look at the size of it. So this is the left lobe of the liver. The tumor is right here. Now this is very encouraging because it seems to be the only lump that he has. And so he has the best opportunity for being cured of this problem. So this uh, is about 40% of the volume of the liver. But it will grow back, we presume, almost to the normal size within three to four months. It's an amazing organ. Like all surgeons, Dr. Taylor has had a huge influence on the lives of countless people over the years. Patients like Uri Bengino, who had two major liver operations in his early 20s. In reality, I only had six weeks to live. That's all I had left. I had six weeks to live. And uh, thank God that, you know, he's got incredible hands and he had an incredible operation and uh, he saved my life. And, you know, when someone saves your life, I mean, you can never give them enough. 
there is no word to describe the feeling that I have to him. Not just me, but my family, my mother, our appreciation of what he did for me is, is incredible. There are an awful lot of people, uh, doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers everywhere who do no more, no less than, than I do. Having no other way to express his appreciation, Uri has offered to have a limousine at Dr. Taylor's disposal whenever he might need it. My value systems have changed immeasurably since uh, I was a resident. Well done. <laughs> Thanks for the perspiration. We really didn't think much of ourselves or our families in those days. My professional career, it was number one in my life. And the major difference is that that although the hours are still there, they are a distant second to where my heart lies. Nothing will ever approach the first place that my family uh, holds in, in my life. I feel a lot more comfortable when I'm surrounded by the, the family. So uh, whether it be here or uh, at work, so. Dr. Taylor's five children have all been in the OR and it's had some influence on their career choices. I think it's unusual um, for, uh, for the children of, of doctors and surgeons to, uh, to go into medicine and surgery. One of the major reasons is they hear all the frustrations. I just don't want to be in the medical field. I've worked in the hospital for a few years. I, I like it, but I'm, I'm not thinking of becoming a surgeon. Probably general or cardiac, maybe? Surgeon. Yeah, a surgeon. Um, or maybe not in the medical, maybe something with cars. Reinhard Banson is back for a final consultation the day before his extensive Whipple surgery for a tumor in the pancreas. We have to uh, carefully dissect out the head of the pancreas. You can't take out the head of the pancreas without taking out the, the duodenum. It's a long, meticulous procedure. And this kind of operation is probably going to take two or three months uh, before he's really feeling himself. The other possible complication, of course, is that if we do find something at operation that wasn't expected, uh, with all his CT scans and his other uh, imaging studies, then we may decide, unfortunately, at surgery that this is unresectable. Yes, I do have my, my downsides, too, where everybody has them, you know. But uh, in, in, in this particular case, I, 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 I'm, I'm quite optimistic there, quite, uh, quite cheerful, actually. Uh, this is very difficult. This has been unbelievably difficult. It's hard to say how much of this is tumor and how much is inflammation. Dr. Taylor is at his desk early as usual. Today, he will perform the lengthy and difficult Whipple procedure for Reinhard Banson. We still have doctors who feel that this particular procedure that we do is a, too dangerous, and B, if you ever get through it, you'll be some sort of a gastrointestinal cripple. You really won't be able to eat very well and you won't enjoy life. In fact, both of those things are, are wrong, although we, we can never assure anybody that there's 100% safety, unfortunately. Mr. Banson, there he is. Good morning. Good morning to you. You all set? All set. Good man. Sorry, my hands are cold, but we'll uh, we'll do the best for you. Well, but they're steady. Oh yes, they are. They're, they're fairly steady. <laughs> okay, sir. See you later. In this particular situation, we have to uh, carefully dissect out the head of the pancreas, which unfortunately is very intimately involved with anatomy around it. So What's the critical area going to be? The critical area is, is the vein here, and it's, it depends on whether this tumor mass is actually involving the portal vein and whether we actually have to do a resection of the portal vein. You can't take out the head of the pancreas without uh, having some very careful dissection around the main vein that comes from the bowels into the liver and so on. So it, it's a long, meticulous procedure. Okay to start? Yeah. Thank you. Everybody okay? A small incision is made to first allow Dr. Taylor to examine the state of the pancreas. I'm wondering if he's got pancreatitis. Holy shit. This is really, really inflamed and firm. With the pancreas so inflamed, it's hard for the team to determine the size of the tumor. And probably a good hour now, and we still don't know what we're going to be able to do for this gentleman. 
And this is one of the critical areas in this kind of work. We just can't tell at surgery, and sometimes we have to make a decision based on what our hands tell us. After careful inspection, the team decides to go ahead with the removal of the tumor. We have to be very, very honest with the patients that we're not perfect any more than they are, and that there are major risks that the patient should taking. We just believe that the risks that they're taking by not having them treated and not having them operated on are significantly greater than, than if they do have the operations. The pancreas is so inflamed that it's hard to tell what is tumor and what is inflammation. This seems like a little more complex than the ones we've had before. Huh? This is a critical point of the operation where we're trying to see if we can go behind the pancreas and in front of the superior mesenteric vein. That vein uh, carries the blood from the whole bowel up into the liver. And uh, you can imagine it's, uh, it's a fairly exciting time if you get into that vein. Once we've done this, at, you know, at this stage, we've basically burnt our bridges, particularly when we divide the pancreas. We, we have to take it out, no matter what. This has been unbelievably difficult. Can I have a lower, please? We're going to need the 5-0 in a minute. I want you to put this in, Sean. We're right in the surface here. A portion of the stomach gets removed first. Now we're just sewing off the distal end of the uh, common bile duct. We're now we're getting to the stage of actually removing the tumor. That, that'll be the next stage. This is not going to be easy to get this off. I don't want to stretch this vein. It's already shown us that he doesn't like that. OK. Scissors, please. It's about to come out now. I think it's not attached anymore. OK. So we've taken out a couple of percent of stomach. There's the duodenum. The important thing is right in here. This is the head of the pancreas here. This is worrisome, this area through here. It's a very, very large mass. And I'm counting that a lot of this will end up to be inflammation, and the tumor will be down inside there. It turned out to be extremely difficult. Uh, and of course, the, the challenge is just starting. We have to put everything back together again now. Um, I'm quite enthusiastic about his ability to get through the operation, obviously. Uh, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't have done it otherwise. OK? Great. Nice Thank job. You, Thank you very much. Great. Well, we started operating, I think, around 9 o'clock. And I think right now it's about quarter to 4. This proved to be so difficult that um, it's something you can't rush. How do I feel? Um, like a drowned rat. It was rather difficult, as you said, because there's a lot of inflammation around this tumor. Uh, the pathology report. Pathology yeah, that's pathology. going to be very important now. Um, let me just check on him first. Good morning, Mr. Banson. We're looking fine. Are you having much pain? No, I, I have no pain at all, other than uh, what you have if you do sit-ups here, that you have a bit of a muscle. Uh, I don't know. I've never done sit-ups. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's always good. If somebody has a sense of humor within 12 hours of this operation, we know they're doing pretty darn well. I was really shocked how long it did take there. It was longer because there was a lot of inflammation around this tumor. There's no evidence of tumor in the lymph nodes, and so it just seemed confined to the head of the pancreas. Yeah. Well, this will yet have to be confirmed by the... Uh, the pathology report. The pathology yeah, report. that's going to be very important. Everything is as it should be. Uh, he's all his the things that we can measure uh, seem to be fine, and uh, of course he's brighter than any of us at this moment. So <laughs> I'm very pleased. Reinhard Banson recovered well after the procedure, but ten weeks later, scans show the presence of new tumors. It appears there are traces in the rest of the body. So I'm, uh, I'm a little depressed about the news, but it, it doesn't, um, well, it's one of life's adversities. We've got to take it together uh, as, it, as it comes. Reinhardt is now considering a regimen of chemotherapy. The most challenging time is trying to be honest with the patient, trying to indicate that we will do everything we possibly can, and of course we do, and then having to break the news to that patient and the family that despite our best efforts, that the disease 
was to such an extent that, that we just weren't going to be able to, to help surgically to any great extent. That is by far the worst time that we have. I, I haven't done very well with that. Um, when I have patients who don't do as well as we would like, I'm one of those people, I, I end up waking up at three in the morning. I just, uh, and I've never been able to change that. Now, on a personal level, I try to create the biggest risk I possibly can. The risk to me is the more you invest in your family, the more you invest in your friends, the more emotionally committed you are to everything that you do and the people that you're involved with, the more you risk. My attitude is um, risk a lot, risk everything and, and do as, get into people's lives and be as important as you can be in their life and make people as important as they can be in yours because then you're really living and you're risking a lot by losing it.